Hey there, it's Laura here from Making Cards is Fun. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be creating a slimline fall themed card featuring Lan Fang goodies, including the brand new Let's Go Nuts theme set from their fall and winter 2020 release. I'm starting out by coloring these images using Copic sketch markers. I stamped them on Trenzo type perfect coloring paper using Memento Dexito Black ink. And I combined the new Let's Go Nuts theme set with the older pick of the patch theme set, which also has adorable squirrels in it. So these sets are just really great to combine. For my red squirrel, I used YR27, YR24, and YR21 because the YR21 was just a little bit off screen so you couldn't see it. While I was coloring these images, I was thinking that a lot of card makers, a lot of long fun card makers in particular, use a white gel pen to add some extra interest to their colored images. And I think that it always looks so cool and so playful and I think it really adds an extra little something to your colored images. I think that it adds even more dimension and life to your stamps. So I decided to be a copycat and give it a go. So I used a um, white gel pen to add or to draw like a little line and a little dot. And for some reason, it really makes a big difference. At first, I wasn't too sure what to think about it. I thought that it looked better um, when those other card makers did it. But then after just uh, stepping away for a minute, then come back. And then I thought, well, it actually kind of looks pretty good. It really does add some extra interest to your colored images. The white gel pen I'm using is the Uniball Signo Broad... Um, white gel pen. I have it here next to me and it's a white pigment ink. So before using this gel pen I actually tried this Sakura Jelly Roll white gel pen and the consistency of the pigment was just too watery and it didn't show up on my colored images. Maybe it's because I've had that pen for a while now. Um, but the uh, Uniball white pen just worked a lot better. So I am just uh, just wanted to share that with you. So now that I colored my images, I went ahead and I die cut this slimline rectangle from Lant Fawn. This is from their uh, slimline, let's see, large slimline with sliders die cut set. And I die cut it once out of just regular white cardstock to ink blend and then I die cut that once more uh, to create a wavy border, a stitched hillside border. To add color to my fall background I'm using fossilized amber, ripe persimmon and candied apple distress oxide ink and you all know my ink blending technique by now. I just switch back and forth between all of those colors to get a nice blend. The blending brushes I am using are from Tailored Expressions. This also probably doesn't come as a surprise to you. I am going in with some watercolors to add some spellers and extra interest to my background. These are watercolors from the Kurataki Gansai Tambi watercolor set. I have the box with 36 colors in and then recently I ordered this um, box that has 12 new colors in it and I used two of those colors for this card but as always um, in my video description below you will find a linked supply list so make sure to check that out. I am adding color to my grass piece using Mode Lawn Distress Oxide Ink and this is the border that I die cut using the slimline stitched hillside borders I could set from Lawn Fawn. I'm also going in with green watercolor splatters just because that adds so much more interest to your background and I do this a lot lately. I'm sorry if you're maybe sick of seeing it. I'm using this foam tape from Scotch. This is their foam tape and it works really well. It's a nice thickness and I really like to use it to adhere 
large borders and to adhere my finished card pieces or my card fronts to my note cards to add dimension. I laid out all of my colored images on my slimline piece over here. I didn't adhere them yet because I will be heat embossing a sentiment. Before I'm doing that, I'm going in with my powder tool just to remove any static cling and to prep my cardstock for heat embossing. I'm stamping a sentiment from the Wavy Saying stamp set from Long Fawn using Versamark ink and then I'm sprinkling on opaque bright white embossing powder from WOW. Just going in with a little brush over there just to wipe off any excess embossing powder. Before you heat emboss, you really want to make sure that your Distress Oxide background and your watercolor splatters are completely dry. Otherwise, it will be really hard to get a nice, crisp, embossed sentiment. But I just let my piece dry overnight. In total, I, I spent four days making this card. I always spent like an hour or two, three per day. And then I always came back to add more details. I just couldn't stop. That's just sometimes how my brain works, I guess. So now that I have my embossed sentiment, I am going to adhere each image using tiny foam squares and my Lawn Fawn glue tube. And as always, I use my EK Success tweezers to position each image perfectly. Finally, I am going to add some sparkle using a Crafter's Companion clear sparkle pen. And I wasn't so sure about adding it on top of the white gel pen. I didn't do it because I did a test run and it actually kind of um, made the white pigments kind of bleed and fade away and it really didn't look nice. So I just didn't risk it. I am going to add a coat of glossy accents on top of my images. That doesn't seem to interfere with the white gel pen. And I am also going to apply some Tonic Studios glitter drops. I am using orange soda, honey gold, and white blizzard. There you go, that finishes up my card. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and click the notification bell below. I will see you very soon. Bye bye!